Welcome to this uh, second demonstration for using PowerPoint for instruction. In the first demonstration, uh, we showed how to set a master slide to a blank layout so that you could control everything that's on the screen. We also showed how to put a last slide and next slide button on the screen so that you could navigate from one slide to the next. We also uh, illustrated how to set up uh, the slideshow in a browse by an individual mode so that only those buttons that you place on the screen and activate are active. Any other click will not automatically go to the next slide. In this particular demonstration, we have already done that. We've also set the background with a color to give it a little more interest. In this demonstration, we will show how to uh, create uh, a object on the screen and make it appear and disappear. This is the very basic part of animation, but this particular action can be used to do all kinds of wonderful things. You can have multiple objects appear and disappear. Uh, you can have great animations. So let us show you simply how this works. You'll notice on this slide, we have already indicated that we're going to first insert a slide, an object to show. I have already done that. I inserted this picture of myself uh, onto the slide. The next thing I did was to insert a trigger. In this case, I went to the uh, uh, buttons and inserted uh, or the inserted an object and just inserted a rectangle here. I added text to it that says click here. And then I also added a little text box that says click on the above button to show the instructor. I also added a text box that says click on the picture to hide. Now in order, what I want is that text and the picture to show at the same time. So the first thing I'm going to do after I added all these things to the screen is I'm now going to select the picture and I'm also going to select the uh, text here. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to say I want to group these things together. All right, so now the picture and the click on the picture to hide uh, text will appear at the same time. Now the next thing I need to do is to animate this so that this picture appears only when I click on the button that says click here and disappears when I click on the picture. So in order to do that, I go up here and click on animations. I then go and click on custom animation and now I can add the effect I want. The first thing I need to do is to select the picture that I want to have happen. So we'll select the picture. In this case, it's the group, the picture and the text. I now go to custom animation and I say add an effect. And I say, OK, I want this to enter. Now we could just have it enter or we could have it dissolve in. Let's have it dissolve in. So then it will kind of dissolve in. And that's a little bit fast. Let's just go fast. And that will dissolve in like that. So now we have our picture so it will dissolve in. but how do we know when it's going to happen? So we go here and we, right now it'll happen on a click. But right here, let's go here and say, we don't want to start on the click. We want to start with a trigger. So now you go down to where it says timing. You click on timing and there will be a number of things we can do to make it happen. Now, right now it's set to start on a click, but I don't want it to start on a click. So I go down here on trigger. I go down here and push the button where it says start the effect on and now there is a placeholder here but I want to go down and say I want the rounded rectangle that says click here. So when I click on the rounded rectangle that says click here then it will appear and at the speed it says it's fast I can set all these things. So I can say okay now I've done that. So now let's go to the slideshow mode here and now here's our slide and it has everything on it except the picture. When I click here, the picture dissolves in. When I click on the picture, nothing happens because I didn't set that. So now we have to go back. We push the escape key to go back here. So now we need to do one more thing here, and that is I want this to disappear. So now I'm going to add a second effect. I'm going to say, all right, I want this to exit. And when I want it to exit, I want it to dissolve out. So it disappears like that. Now this is going to dis this is going to disappear on a click, but I don't want it to go on a click. I want again once more. I want to go here and say timing, and now I want to say I'm going to trigger this when I click on itself. So I open this. Now I've got to scroll down and see all these things I placed on the screen, and this is a group, so it's got to be group 10. And I say okay on group 10. So when I click on group 10, that is the picture, it will disappear. So I say okay now it will disappear. Now let's go back to the presentation mode. I go back here. If I click here, the picture will appear. 
if I click on the picture, the picture will disappear. So now we've created an animation that will uh, show and hide things on the screen. Click here, it appears. Click on the picture, it disappears. Now I can have more than one object on a screen. I can have a number of buttons and each one can call something up. I will demonstrate that uh, a little bit later here in this presentation. Okay, now let me show you some of the power of uh, this kind of animation. I'm going to go to the next slide, which is from a previous presentation that I made. This is a rather complex slide. As you can see, there's lots of information on this slide. Uh, it's actually a demonstration of all of the things you need to have to teach a whole task. The content is not so important for our purposes right here, but the animation is. So if I go here and go to the presentation mode for this, and I say push the start button here, uh, I'm going to get animations one at a time. So the first thing it does is to say show the desired consequence. Then it has a more button. I push the more button and then it says okay the first thing is a how to a series of tasks leading to the desired consequence. I push the more button again and it shows me the next step. A specific document activity from each task. So what I've done here is had successive disclosure so that I can talk about each thing as we build this complex diagram. So in the presentation I talk about how we build this complex diagram and so step by step I can present each of the things. It puts the illustration on the screen. I can then talk about it. Then I push the more button and it puts the next one on the screen and I can talk about that. I push the more button and it puts the next one on the screen and we can talk about that. And so this is a very complex uh, animation but it was done exactly the same as we just showed so let me escape from this go back to the screen and now let's go look at the animation we'll click on animation uh, we'll go here to custom animation and now you can see what the custom animation is here now I'm not going to walk through all of this uh, for my class I will make this available so you can actually play with the actual PowerPoint for those that are viewing this online if you want to send me an email which I'll put at the end of this presentation I would be happy to send you the the actual slides that, that you can play with but as you can see the the animation here there is a lot of information here you can see here's the start button and this is what it triggers it triggers this box a desired consequence and and so forth and eventually the start button goes away when all of this is triggered and then it goes down here to the more button and it re the first thing it does is is to show this rectangle uh, this task 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 so all of these things are shown when you push it the first time then these things are shown when you push it the second time and then when you go to the third time all of these things are shown when you go to the fourth time these two things are shown when you go to the fifth time all these are shown when you go to the sixth time all these two things are shown uh, and then eventually at the end of that then the more goes away and the start button comes back at the beginning if we start over so this again it looks really complicated but this diagram this su successive disclosure disclosure diagram was built exactly the way this previous slide was built on this slide we only had one button and it and it triggered one thing on this slide we had one button the start button and it triggered one thing but then we had a more button that we did over and over. So the first time it does one thing, the second time it does some more, the third time it does some more, and so forth. And we also set it up so the start button and more buttons appear. So it's exactly the same thing, just applied over and over again. So you can do very, very interesting, complex uh, animations uh, with this uh, hide and disclose uh, animation that we've just talked about. Uh, you can uh, add a comment to the YouTube here and uh, ask for more information give me some way to contact you or you can obtain more information by going to my website which is mdavidmerrill.com uh, so I appreciate your viewing this presentation hopefully it was helpful to you in how to use PowerPoint for instruction join us again we will probably have more in this series at a later time